Hi man, Rob's wrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. You catch me mid TI-99 repair and what I'm doing today is I'm removing all of these RAM chips. That's there's one just off camera. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight chips and that's what I'm going to be whipping them off uh, to replace them. because I, I had a wafer thin mod and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But first things first, I just wanted to show you this because I want to get on with it. And uh, there's only a limited opportunity to show you really before they're all done. So what I do is I take some side cutters, or sometimes a Dremel to be honest with you, but side cutters are okay if they're small and sharp like this. I use them upside down and I position them just like so and go jink, jink. And I go through all the chips and you can hear it. When you get a snap like that, that's perfect. That's what you want to hear, that snap. And do that both sides and then we'll remove the pins individually and I find that's just simple I know it's a lot of pins but I've got the old sucker thing and all of that the electric one it's just a pain to be honest uh, especially on TIs because they actually bend the pins off the ICs on the other way around uh, probably when they were fitting them so it just makes them a nightmare so better just to cut them uh, and then just take out all the little bits of pin with tweezers and um, you could use your sucker hot air sucker or regular soldering iron and braid there's lots of options after that but the first thing get the chips off and when they're ready look a little wiggle might be all that's enough They'll just be being held on by hardly anything. Pop them off. Dink. Chuck it away. Just make sure you run a little magnet up and down to catch all those pins. You can just chuck them all in the bin, just like I just did. And then uh, just have a look out, keep your soldering iron on, put your soldering iron on if it's not on, and uh, just grab any of these last little bits that aren't, uh, have, you know, haven't removed themselves from the board, who are still stuck on with a teeny bit of solder and it's a good time as well to actually have a look at the PCB because I can see some traces here are looking a bit thin so for example I've got a trace here that I think might have been damaged uh, as these are bust traces they run to each chip the same address lines on each chip luckily if you've got a damaged one between the two you can pretty easily repair that just on the back with a bit of kynar if i'm um in any way suspect of one like this one i might even just physically cut it on purpose and actually just make a manual repair just to make sure it's not going to short and while that's uh, all happening if you've got now a solder sucker it's a good time to get it ready or if it's an electric one get it warmed up because you've got to suck out all the solder out of each of these little teeny teeny via holes in here come on come on there you go so you can see them right there they're all full of solder we're going to clean them out so we can put in our new sockets so i just apply a little bit of solder to each hole and then suck it up uh, with this you need to apply the solder because it's the old solder you know you need to add some bolts so you can actually form a nice seal with this and suck it up but it has the added benefit of tinning it with the new solder which is quite nice sometimes you'll find a hole that doesn't clear don't worry about that just flip the board over and do it on the other side yeah you'll, you'll get it and then once you're done hold it up to the light and then you'll be able to see all of the uh, specks of light through there and if you've got any that aren't quite cleared out you can go in and solder them and if you're having trouble sometimes get a very tiny drill bit just put it in and poke it don't twist it just poke it in and out like a little file just gently do that you can open the hole out and if you're super lucky at the end of the process your IC sockets will go in 
without much of a fight. And I'm actually pretty amazed. So far that's three. Let's see, four. Come on, four. Don't let me down, four. Number four is a bit, is a bit unhappy. Let's try number five. Ooh, five is okay. Let's try six then. So remember some of these, you can always go in underneath and just give them a little touch with a soldering iron. Oh no, I lost a pin. That wasn't happy, that one either. Just be careful. I'm using quite cheap type of sockets here. Um, so the pins can flop out. Uh, I do like turned pins, although I've stopped using them because I get whinged at when I make things with turned pin sockets. Turned pin sockets are way better. They might not be so easy to insert and remove, but then why the hell are you inserting and removing? The di reason they're difficult to remove is that they are designed that the chips will not work their way out of that socket. They are military, military grade. Probably, li ow, 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 literally military grade, so you decide on what you want to use. There was a, a fix I heard once that Atari had where they would take one of their probably computers or consoles and, and slam it on a desk to fix it. That was their fix to see all the memory is in. Um, there you go though. I'm gonna fix these up and then we're gonna flip the board and solder them down. Look at that. I've tacked these in. They're all looking pretty good. So it's just time to solder them really and I've got my soldering iron set a bit too high. Uh, just make sure you're not overdoing it with the old soldering iron temperature. I've got mine currently set to well over 400 degrees and it's going to oxidize like hell when you do that. So I'm just going to give it a tiny brush of some additional flux just to clean things up because it does have that oxidized tip and I'm just going to run through it. So I'm going to do it, I'm going to zoom in a sec to show you just after I've made sure it's all working nicely. Yes, it's flowing. The solder must flow. And that's one row done. And let's see where we are on the camera. I'm gonna find, there we go, we're on, <laughs> I'm not positioning this up with any accuracy, so we'll just catch it as is. So you can see there, it's just flowing through straight like that. And you've got your new row of chips in. Rinse and repeat. How many times do we have to do that? 64 times? Maybe more. <laughs> oh, my solder's jammed up. Just like that. Then you take your new RAM chips, like such. Mm -mm. Like thus. Such is not the right word. And... You shove them in. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you try is that the legs are a bit splayed. So you've got to decide what you want to do and how you're going to straighten those. Uh, you've got two options, really. You can kind of just bend them, like force the pins that are already sitting in the socket bent. Or what I like to do is just take a flat edge like that, push them gently, just give them a little rock, rock and a roller, a little rock and roller just like that. And if I have done this correctly, it'll slip in like that, but upside down. Don't put it upside down. That would be bad. It's going, it's going. Oh, I've got layers upon layers of metal work here all springing. Okay, right, so it's just in like that push it in. Last little crunch. There you go. It wouldn't spring out like that on a turned pin connector, I can tell you. Do the rest exactly the same. And finally, we get to enjoy the fruits of our labour. So there we go. We've got it set up on this little test bench here. I had to modify a power supply board for a Sharp X68000 that was kindly given to me by Ian from Monster Joysticks. And uh, you can see that little regulator on there. That's to give me minus five volts, of course, because these gadgets do require that minus voltage. And I'm just gonna knock it off from the wall switch here because I wanna flip it over and just show you what I ended up doing. And as you can see here, I actually did replace this multiplexer chip because that was messing around as well. And uh, there's my nice bank of socketed memory. So all's well that ends well. I get to 
reassemble this now and move on in my life because I've got so many projects such as Neo Geo.